Hey everyone, it's Alex again. I'm here to talk a little bit about the changes that occur in elderly patients that affect the way in which drugs are acted upon by the body. In other words, age-related changes that affect drug pharmacokinetics in geriatric patients. Let's get started. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to Describe how phase 1 and phase 2 hepatic metabolism change with age. Explain how volume of distribution changes for lipophilic, hydrophilic, and plasma protein-bound drugs. Understand how to adjust the loading dose in response to these changes in volume and distribution. And identify how clearance affects loading doses versus maintenance dose in elderly patients. As you know, pharmacokinetics refers to the metabolism, absorption, distribution, and elimination of a drug in the human body. In the geriatric population, age-related changes affect all four of these pharmacokinetic phases. This has very important clinical implications. Let's discuss these phases and the relevant age-related changes that impact each phase, starting with drug absorption. For the most part, though there are age-related changes that occur in elderly populations that affect drug absorption, such as a decrease in the surface area of the small intestine, a decrease in the rate of gastric emptying, and an increase in gastric pH, most of these changes are clinically irrelevant when it comes to absorption of PO drugs. One parameter that may disproportionately impact drug absorption in geriatric patients is drug-drug interactions. This is due to the high prevalence of polypharmacy in elderly individuals. For example, the co-administration of a proton pump inhibitor, which increases gastric pH, and a calcium and calcium carbonate, which requires an acidic environment for optical absorption, may decrease the absorption of calcium. This increases the risk of constipation, a common adverse effect of calcium carbonate. In general, though, like I said earlier, absorption is the least clinically relevant pharmacokinetic parameter to change in elderly patients. In contrast, understanding the changes in metabolism that occur with aging can be very important for your future patients and your board exams. Orally administered drugs undergo two types of metabolism in the liver, phase 1 and phase 2 metabolism. Phase 1 metabolism is carried out by the hepatic CYP450 system, and this type of metabolism is impaired in elderly patients. Phase 2 metabolism refers to the conjugation reactions, including glucuronidation, acetylation, sulfonation, and methylation that transform drugs into highly polar, often inactive compounds for primarily renal elimination. Phase 2 metabolism is not affected by aging. Due to this decrease in phase 1 metabolism, Drugs that undergo significant phase 1 metabolism may have a higher bioavailability, and they may reach higher plasma concentrations in elderly patients. Because the hepatic clearance of these drugs is prolonged, these patients are at a higher risk of drug toxicity. Similarly, drugs that are absorbed in a prodrug form and require CYP450 enzymes to transform the prodrug into an active metabolite will be less efficacious. Other age-related changes that affect hepatic metabolism include an overall decrease in perfusion of the liver and a decrease in the overall size of the liver. The cumulative effect is that older patients experience decreased first-pass metabolism. Because of this, a lower therapeutic dose of many drugs may be sufficient in elderly patients. Next, the volume of distribution of a drug is also affected by aging. The volume of distribution is the proportion of the total drug administered to the total amount of drug in the plasma. Essentially, it's the initial dose of the drug that you put into the body. Some of that initial loading dose stays in the circulation and some of it distributes to the body tissues. The higher the volume of distribution, the more likely the drug is to be found in the body tissues, and the lower the volume of distribution, the more likely the drug is to be contained in the plasma. Elderly patients have an increased total body fat content and a decrease in total body water. Older patients also have a decreased amount of plasma proteins, such as albumin. The amount of plasma proteins is even lower in patients with renal or hepatic disease. The increased total body fat effectively increases the total volume of distribution of lipophilic drugs. The increased volume of distribution can increase the elimination half-life of lipophilic drugs in elderly patients. The larger the volume of distribution, the more likely the drug is to distribute to the tissues and leave the plasma, and therefore the larger the loading dish you would need to give in order to achieve a target plasma concentration for lipophilic drugs. The decreased total body water decreases the volume of distribution of hydrophilic drugs, and this decreases the elimination half-life of these drugs. The decreased level of plasma proteins, such as albumin, can increase the apparent volume of distribution of drugs that are highly plasma protein-bound. When the total concentration of plasma protein declines, 
administering the normal dose of a drug that is normally entirely plasma protein bound will result in a higher concentration of free unbound drug that can distribute to the tissues, and this can have toxic effects on the tissues. For example, warfarin is approximately 99% plasma protein bound, and less than 1% of warfarin is unbound. Recall that only the unbound drug is active. Let's say that a 45 year old patient takes a certain dose of warfarin and then decides to stop taking it. When she becomes 80, for some reason she decides to start taking it again, and she gets it filled at the same dose. However, now her total level of plasma proteins has declined such that only 98% of the same dose of warfarin is able to bind to plasma proteins. The concentration of free warfarin in this patient is now double what it should be, which can be lethal. Thus, doses of highly plasma protein-bound drugs may need to be decreased in elderly patients due to decreased levels of plasma proteins. Lastly, let's discuss how drug elimination changes with age. One of the most significant age-related changes in elimination is decreased renal clearance. A majority of patients undergo an age-related decline in kidney function. Many patients may also have some level of renal disease that affects elimination of renally cleared drugs. Decreased drug elimination results in an increased plasma drug concentration. Because the plasma drug concentration is higher in these patients, in order to compensate, you may need to decrease the dose of drug or the frequency with which it is given. But here's the important question. Should you adjust the loading dose or the maintenance dose? So the most important concept I want to tie in here is that in elderly patients and or patients with kidney disease or any other disease that impacts the clearance of a drug, the loading dose, which is the initial dose that you must give to achieve a target plasma concentration that you want in the circulation, is unaffected. This is where memorizing those farm formulas comes in handy. The loading dose formula states that loading dose equals target plasma concentration times volume of distribution divided by the bioavailability of the drug. As you can see, clearance of the drug does not factor into the calculation for loading dose, so no matter what the cause is of impaired clearance, the loading dose will not need to be adjusted. The maintenance dose, on the other hand, will need to be adjusted in patients with impaired clearance. The maintenance dose is the dose you need to continue to give to maintain a constant steady state plasma concentration. At steady state, the clearance of a drug matches the infusion rate, and the plasma concentration remains stable. Given that definition, it does make sense that the drug clearance must be factored into the calculation for maintenance dose. Even without knowing any of that, though, if all you knew were these two formulas, you would know that only the maintenance dose is affected by drug clearance. Now let's try out a flash quiz. Which of the following accurately describes the pharmacokinetic changes that occur with age? So if you said D, you'd be correct. Decreased volume distribution of hydrophilic drugs due to decreased total body water and decreased phase 1 metabolism. Now let's sum up everything we've gone over. Here are the bottom lines. Phase 1 metabolism decreases with age, while phase 2 metabolism is unchanged with age. Volume of distribution increases for lipophilic drugs and highly plasma protein bound drugs, and volume of distribution decreases for hydrophilic drugs. You need to increase the loading dose for lipophilic drugs and decrease the loading dose for hydrophilic drugs to compensate for these volume of distribution changes. The increased volume distribution unbound drug of highly protein bound drugs can be toxic if the loading dose is not decreased to account for the drop in plasma protein concentration. And in patients with a decreased clearance, only the maintenance dose needs to be adjusted. The loading dose is not affected by clearance. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed my video or found it helpful, feel free to give me a thumbs up down below. Thanks guys, happy studying.